Welcome to Valley Mobile Automotive. We're sitting in a 2004 Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter. The owner says after the vehicle has warmed up, it starts running rough. On a cold engine, seems to be fine, but once it's warmed up, come to a stoplight or stop sign, and it just starts running uh, pretty rough. So I got the scan tool pulling codes. Let's see what we got. Looks like we got a few codes and a couple of modules. Uh, not worried about any of these. The PCM powertrain control module, that's what we want. Let's go ahead and enter there. It says we have five codes. We want continuous memory DTCs. This is what we're looking at. Some lean codes, bank one and two. It's good to know. So we got a global lean condition, a catalytic converter. So both converters, but the lean condition can cause issues uh, with the converters working properly. Uh, 2004 intake runner stuck open and then another uh, repeat lean. All right, off camera, I started it up just to see what the customer was talking about. And sure enough, it revs up, but if you let it idle on its own, it, it dies. As of right now, this thing will not stay running on its own. So I have a bunch of data PIDs selected. I'll turn the camera around so you can see what we're looking at. We're gonna record the information and then analyze it. So these are the data pins I have selected. We have barrel, pretty close to 14, so that looks good right off the bat. Fuel rail pressure, the transducer says we have 39. That's pretty good. We'll watch that number change when we fire it up. I got all four oxygen sensors, mass airflow sensor. I have short-term fuel trims. Now, I don't know, it's saying 86 right now, so maybe that's what it was last time before it died on me. Not sure. That's quite a bit of trimming. 86 means it's adding, so it's plus 86, uh, which is pretty extreme. And then cam timing errors. These 5.4 liters have an issue with their cam timing, so I always just, if it's running rough, I'm going to select cam timing just as a rule. All right, let me start it up. I'll record this. I'll graph it because I like graphs. See what we get. So we're idling now, right around a thousand. That's a little high. You can feel it maybe misfiring every once in a while, but it's not too bad. Oh, now it's really rough, super rough. You can see our oxygen sensor. I don't know if that's upstream or downstream, but it looks like all of them are flat at zero. Let me give it a little throttle. If we can get some O2 sensor action. They're starting to move. I'm not sure which one is upstream, which one's downstream, because they're all fluctuating. So the downstream is supposed to be a steady line for the catalytic converter efficiency. Um, so it's possible that these catalytic converters really are shocked. Let's go to our fuel trims. See, we're plus 29, plus 30, 32, 37. See, that's crazy. So we have a very strong leak somewhere. Variable cam timing, it's off, really nothing. 0.8 degrees, that's... So I don't think cam timing is an issue. We're dealing with some kind of possible vacuum leak or something like that. Now watch as I give it throttle, the fuel trim's drop. So that right there tells me I have some kind of vacuum leak. Yeah, so I think we find this vacuum leak, we fix this vehicle. My foot's off the throttle and they, they climb right back up. So I was poking around the engine looking at all the vacuum lines. Uh, anything, this is the mass airflow sensor, so any air leak from this point towards the manifold could cause a lean condition because the mass airflow sensor is not metering the airflow at that point. It meters everything coming in from here, but it doesn't meter anything coming in uh, from this point forward. Uh, these PCV hoses, sorry, I'm, I'm just on the top of the bumper so my balance isn't the best, but this PCV hose, if it's cracked, it's possible to create a vacuum leak. If you look over here, right here is a vacuum line and it routes to the back of the engine. And then over here, somewhere, there's another one. But notice what I found just poking around. This vacuum line in the back where it plugs in, that was disconnected, just lying there. It goes somewhere uh, in the middle, but it was just lying there, unplugged. So that'll create, look at the size of the 
that nipple that it goes on to. So that's a huge vacuum leak. So I need to feel around, figure out where this plugs back in and plug it in. And I bet that takes care of our vacuum leak. Not sure how it got knocked off, but I wonder if this being just dangling there has anything also to do with our intake runner. The mechanism in the back to adjust the flaps inside the runner uh, is in the back, kind of near where that thing was. So I wonder if one caused the other or the other caused the one, not quite sure. But I'm gonna figure out where that plugs in and see uh, what we got. Just so you guys have reference to, so this is the back of the intake manifold. There's actually two hoses. This one here, we'll go ahead and check that to make sure that it's still plugged in. And then this one goes on the other side. So it looks like kind of towards the bottom of the back. So hopefully I can get my hand back there enough to plug it back in. But one on one side, one on the other. So I can't get my chubby hands back there. But I think if I remove the fuel rail, there's two bolts on one side, two bolts on the other side, lift it up and forward, I uh, might be able to get my hands back there. But it's pretty tight spacing. So I was able to disconnect the fuel rail. There's two bolts on this side, two bolts on the other side. Kind of wiggle it to get it to come up. Pray that your injectors come out. All of them came out except this one popped off the top of the fuel rail. No big deal. I'll just put the O-ring back on and put it in. But that allows the whole fuel rail to slide forward. That back part of the rail there was what's in the way. So sliding forward, that's enough. I can feel the nipple. So I'll get that back on. I thought I could feel it with my fingers, but I was actually feeling the head of a bolt. So that wasn't it. But if you look at my camera here, it goes back. I have the sticker on the fuel rail, goes right back there. Look at my camera here. Right, oh, right, hold on, hold on. Find it again, right there. Can you see it? Yeah, right there. So that's where I need to get that hose back onto, is right there. And I think I can get it with my hands. I'm, I really don't want to pull this manifold off. But now that I have a better trajectory of where it is, I think I can maybe find it. I still can't feel it, but get myself oriented. So the nipple's there, and it looks like it's under that electrical connector. So under the electrical connector, if you're looking at the truck, that would be off to your left. So looking at the truck, electrical connector, it'd be kind of just to the left and then down. All right, just for confirmation, I got it on there. So I'm gonna put the fuel right back on, start it up, look at our fuel trims. I got the vehicle started back up. These are the fuel trims back down close to zero, plus or minus five is fine, runs really good. Now these fuel trims, of course, will need to adjust a little as they get uh, relearned. So that disconnected hose was our vacuum leak. And if you saw the size of that hose, that's a pretty substantial leak. That's why our fuel trims were climbing so much. All right, there you go. That is a fix. Just a vacuum hose popped off. Not quite sure how that happened, um, but there you go. One thing to take away from this is how we utilize scan tool data to point us in the right direction. We saw that the fuel trims were way high at idle, but once we gave it some throttle, they dropped back down to normal. What fuel trims are, in a nutshell, is the engine computer's compensation above a pre-programmed parameter. A lot of words, but what that means is, from the factory, the engine computer is designed to inject a certain amount of fuel. That would be a fuel trim of 0%. If the engine computer has to add more fuel on the fuel trim scale, that would be a positive number. If the engine computer has to take away fuel from its pre-programmed parameter, then we'll see that as a negative number. So in this case, a positive number, that meant that the engine computer thought it needed to add more fuel to the engine to get a proper air-fuel ratio mix. Why would it need to add more fuel? Well, because it was getting more air than it thought. The mass airflow sensor tells the engine computer how much air is entering the engine. If air is entering from a back door or another way into the engine, the engine computer doesn't know because the mass airflow sensor is not reporting it. Therefore, the engine computer has to compensate by adding fuel. So we saw those in the positive fuel trims. Why were the fuel trims higher at idle than they were when we gave it throttle? Well, that has to do with manifold vacuum. When the throttle plate is closed, the manifold is under peak vacuum. So that vacuum draws in air through the manifold leak, whether it be a gasket or an unplugged hose like in this case. But once you open the throttle valve, air flows freely through the throttle body, decreasing vacuum. So if you decrease vacuum, 
it no longer draws as much through the manifold leak, but it draws it much more easy through the throttle body. So in a way, when you give it throttle, your vacuum leak is less. So the engine computer doesn't have to compensate as much. But when you close the throttle, vacuum increases, so your leak increases, and therefore the engine computer has to increase its compensation. All right, there you go. Hopefully some of this information is useful. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.